there, Taurus. It's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for 2020, your yearly check-in. Can you believe it? We have made it. So we're going to take a look at what's happening in the overview of this year for you, and I will be with you every month and every week as we travel through 2020, bringing you updates and bringing you insights. If you'd like to know more in advance, you can definitely check out my blog at stormygrace.com where I've got the major astrological transits and aspects happening just on my blog, so you can pop over and check them out if you just need to eat some of that delicious information. All right, you guys, so 2020 is a big year astrologically. We've got cool things happening in the sky. Not only do we have six lunar eclipses as opposed to our normal four this year, every planet that can will retrograde this year, so it's definitely a year to practice that patience because nothing is rushing forward, right? We're making changes, but we're not rushing forward. As well, we've got Saturn and Pluto coming together in a conjunction at the beginning of the year. We've got three different Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions which we love those. We are here for those. I'll explain that. And we've got the great conjunction of 2020 between Jupiter and Saturn coming up at the end of the year. So it is nothing short of life on life's terms happening this year, but definitely some big shifts that hopefully you'll be able to identify the changes as they've come over the last few years in the patterns of your life. Now, first and foremost, Mercury is going to retrograde three different times this year per usual, February, June, and October, and I will cover those in the monthly videos and bring... Um information about each of the different retrogrades as well. But what you can do is look back at my Mercury retrograde in the elements video from 2019, because this is much of a repeat of what we had last year. Mercury will be retrograde in water signs again. So definitely check out that video and see how it affects your element. Now, the other thing I keep in mind for you, Taurus, as we jump into 2020, is that Uranus is still in your sign and going to be there for quite some time, right? So Taurus, this is still a year where there's a fair amount of change going on for you. There's a fair amount of instability that is Taurus that is happening, especially if you're in the earlier degrees, zero to nine degrees. This is still going to be a very impactful year for you. So just know that things are changing. You're changing. Some things may not even be recognizable to you, and that's okay. You've had to outgrow your fixed nature in order to move into something else. And I think that this year, having so so much of the impact, especially at the beginning of the year, happen in delicious earth energy of Capricorn, you've got a lot of help here to continue to make these shifts and these changes so that you can get on board and aligned with what your purpose is, what you should be do doing, Taurus, okay? All right, so let's jump in and look at this by date. Right at the beginning of the year, we've got our first eclipse that we're coming into. January 10th, we're going to have a lunar eclipse at 20 degrees of Cancer. This is going to light up your third house. So this is all things about thinking, about communication, about decision making, right? Studying things. Taurus, this is a brilliant year for studying as well with all of that Saturn energy happening in your ninth house. It's also a brilliant year for teaching or sharing information in some way. You may find Taurus this year, this year that you're continuing on a theme of last year, gathering a lot of information so you can get ready to share it, right? So this lunar eclipse is going to help you end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment to something in your third house areas, which also could include changes between siblings. You could have new contracts coming to the table, new networking, new social things. The third house were very, very social. I do think for some of you, this could be the indicator of a move as well. Even though it's not in your fourth house, you could be getting access to new neighbors coming from the third house. So that could come from a move or maybe somebody else moves in next to you and you have a contact there. Either way, you're going to make some big adjustments that will last for about six months to make sure you're in the right flow in this third house area. January 12th, we've got Saturn and Pluto coming together in their conjunction at 22 degrees of Capricorn. Now, when Saturn and Pluto come together, they only do this once every 34 years. So these are the big guys, right? When they come together, when they're working together, we're going to evolve. Saturn's taking us to the next level. Pluto's trying to help us die off in Phoenix so that we can become something else and live in a different way. We have to die off and live different in order to live in that higher vibration that Saturn's bringing to the table. Now, it's really this energy, you guys, of sweeping out old foundations so that new ones can live, but it's slow. This is not necessarily fast. 
right? It is a slow evolutionary process and some of it could have to do with your money in some way, shape or form. You're the sign of beauty and money. So this could have to do with something economic or business or some kind of authority in your life. Now, because this energy is coming together in the ninth house, first thing I'll tell you is be prepared and you should be able to weather whatever the storm is, right? Or weather whatever challenges come up for you because they are trying to take you up, but you have to pay attention in this ninth house. Studying, education, higher learning, teaching, um, putting YouTube videos out or videos out in some way, shape or form, broadcasting yourself in any way, shape or form. You've got Saturn and Pluto in conjunction here. They can really help you, but you've also got to help yourself. If something legal does come to your table, don't even think of delaying it. Get on top of it, get ready, be prepared, show up and let it let this energy help you get through and evolve through whatever that process may be. March 22nd, we've got Saturn taking a dip into the energy of Aquarius, which is going to be Saturn moving now into your 10th house. But this particular movement of Saturn at this time is just a snick snack. It's just a preview, okay? It's a preview of, of how things are gonna change, how you're gonna level up in your business life, right? In your soul level calling life. Because Saturn is going to retrograde and move back into the energy of Capricorn and then jump back forward at the end of the year into this area and we'll be there until 2023. So with this snack that happens here on March 22nd, pay attention because you might start to feel more obligation. It might feel heavier. You take on more responsibility and it would be in the area of your career, your soul of a calling, something in your community. You have had this Capricorn energy working, you've been studying, you've been teaching, you've been talking about whatever, you've been getting prepared, right? To move this into something you can make money with. You may become known in your industry, you may become known in your community, maybe you've been studying and you're feeling like you need to run for some kind of political office or have a voice or help in some way, shape or form. Whatever it is, the study, the preparedness, the learning has gotten you ready, even if you're retired, to step into some new activity that is very, very public. So you'll get a sneak peek of it um, from March until July. And then July, it's gonna move backwards and then we'll come forward in December. So keep mind of what your sneak peek shows you. May 13th, oh, pause for a minute. Let's talk about these Jupiter-Pluto conjunctions because yes, we are here for these. Jupiter and Pluto come together in a conjunction in the energy of Capricorn three different times this year, April 4th, June 30th, and November 12th. And these are going to light up your ninth house. Now, again, these are such positive, helpful energies in your ninth house. This is like intense focus, intense opportunity, intense action, and you can be taking opportunities that give you a large leap forward. Is this massive teaching, massive education, um, something happening that actually brings big, focused benefit into your life. Remember, Saturn's getting ready to step into your 10th house. Are you ready to take that career to the next level? Are you ready to take you to the next level in public? These energies are so good. So please make mind of those dates and really use these energies. They present the opportunity, but you can just as easily waste it. So don't waste those energies, okay? May 13th to June 25th, Venus is going to be retrograde in the energy of Gemini, which will light up your second house. Now, Venus is your ruling planet, so it's always a little bit intense when your ruling planet goes retrograde. So just be mindful of that, that you maybe don't have the best focus on things like love and money at this time. Plus, it's retrograde in your second house. It's not a great idea to make huge investments at this time, right? What it's a great idea to do is to clean up your budget, relook at your money. Do you need to relook at raising your prices. Saturn will have dipped into your 10th house. Are you undervaluing or overvaluing yourself in some way, shape, or form based on what you actually have to offer? This is also a delicious energy, I think, Taurus, for getting your self-esteem and your self-confidence together, right? So much has changed with Uranus in your sign, and you maybe need to shake and go, wait a minute, where is my self-esteem? Where is my confidence, right? So this is a wonderful energy to help you do that. In the energy of Gemini, I, I also think maybe it's a great energy for lots of conversation or communication in some way, shape, or form. Maybe some networking. Um, if you did need to take a class or do some learning about self-esteem, about money, about any of those things, this retrograde will help you. 
Now, just in general, we advise that during a Venus retrograde, you don't start new relationships, you don't get married, you don't make big investments, any of those things, because when Venus comes out of retrograde, it's not what you what you thought it was. It's just not what it seemed exactly. But life is life, and you have to make the decisions when you make them, so do the best that you can, okay? All right, June 5th, we've got a solar eclipse in the energy of Sagittarius, mixing it up a little bit. So you're going to start to see some impact in this eighth house over the next six months. Now, the lunar eclipse helps you end something, acknowledge something, or make an adjustment to something in some way, shape, or form. So in your eighth house, this is joint resources, this is sex, this is intimacy, it's finance, it's collaboration in some way, shape, or form. But also, Taurus, if you're in a position where you need something um, that has to do with healing, this is an energy where the eclipse will show you. It will help you see. It lifts the veil on things that you couldn't see before. I do love this too because it could be changes in your partner's money, even if it's a business partner, that actually becomes a benefit to you as well. Again, at this point in the year, if you've got to file those taxes, you've got to look back at any money, inheritance, anything like that, make sure that you get your eyes and your hands on that so that that can be taken care of and wound out of your year and transitioned out, okay? June 21st, we've got a solar eclipse in the energy of Cancer. It's going to be at zero degrees, so lighting up third house. It's going to bring new beginnings, opportunities, six months of opportunities for brand new beginnings, networking, studying, communicating, a new contract, a new website, a new book, right? Anything in that third house. Again, it could be those new neighbors. But then on July 5th, we're going to have a lunar eclipse that happens at 13 degrees of Capricorn. So the third and the ninth axes still stay lit up for you, studying and learning and teaching, right? This is a thing I just keep thinking of for you as well, Taurus, is you've got to remember to study. Don't let anything stand in your way this year of gathering the information you need in order to disseminate that information, to put it out there, to share it with other people because it is literally going to be your bread and butter in the years coming up. September 9th through November 13th, we've got Mars retrograde in the energy of Aries, which is the sign just right behind you. He's your other neighbor, right? So Mars is comfortable in this retrograde. He's in Aries, which is the sign he rules naturally. So he's quite comfortable in this retrograde. For you, it's going to light up the 12th house. So one of the things that comes to mind for me is, of course, it's not really a great time for starting new projects or new research or anything like that, but finish up. Anything that needs to come to culmination, anything that needs to transition out, out. Anything that needs your compassion, your forgiveness over, maybe a, a creative touch, this is a great energy to do that. The other thing I think with Mars retrograde, because Mars is over action, is this may be the time where you have to figure out if you're getting enough rest. Are you caring for your rest in the right way? And Taurus, I love you and I'm a Taurus too, but are you resting too much? Is it time for you to move your hiney just a little bit, right? Any of the things that may be hidden. This Mars retrograde in terms of your action and your energy and what do you need to be putting your energy into? Let go of the stuff that doesn't actually need your attention, right? Let Mars help you scoot that stuff on out. Now, Mars is also over desires. So in this 12th house, I do think that old romance, old love, old desires in general that you have may come back to your table. We've had a Venus retrograde rolling through that second house, maybe a past talent or a past creative something that you have comes back to the table. And as the retrograde ends, you're able to take it forward and out into the world. So keep in mind that your retrogrades are really very friendly for you here. But yes, of course, you could hear from people, places, and things from the past. Now, we do advise when Mars is retrograde to avoid any surgery if you can. If you cannot and your life is in danger, please do what you need to do, okay? November 30th, we've got another lunar eclipse. This is going to be at 8 degrees of Gemini, second house. Now, December 14th, we've got a solar eclipse in Sagittarius at 23 degrees, so eighth house. Now, the second and eighth second and eighth house axes are going to really start to get going. We're going to have node energy move into these axes as well. So this will become an area of focus, how you make money, the money that's coming into you. I keep getting a picture here of somebody's royalties. So if you are doing something where you're going to get royalties, push forward with that. If you haven't been collecting on your royalties, um, please make sure that you step into that. 
anything with eclipse energy brings a little disruption so that you will course correct. So any changes that need to be made with your money, your intimacy, or maybe even your study of astrology or something occult or healing that you could be making money on, these guys are going to give you the opportunity to bring that to the surface. Now, December 17th, we've got Saturn officially back in the energy of Aquarius. It's going to be here now until 2023. So Saturn is going to work. It's going to raise you to the next level in your career or in your community. So be prepared, Taurus. Uranus is bringing that change in. You are ready for the next level. I support you. The universe supports you. If you've been doing the work, you will get to be known. Now, I will tell you quite as honestly, we've got a couple challenging days coming in 2020. If you are not doing the work, it will not come to you. This is not the year where you get to sit back and let it come to you, Taurus. you got to be in movement. you got to be putting in the work and the effort. On the 20th of December, Jupiter comes into Aquarius. So again, now we've got expansion. We've got um, Jupiter as the guru, the great teacher. You could really become great in your workplace in some way, shape, or form, or at least have some expansion available to you. December 21st, we've got Saturn and Jupiter coming together in conjunction in Aquarius. And when these two come together, they're called the age rulers, right? And as we move towards the age of Aquarius, these guys are over economic, religious, political things that are going on. Law and order, expansion, teaching and wisdom. So all of these things globally are going to change. There should be some, some kind of calm coming to the chaos that's been going on in these regions which do affect us globally all over whether it's just your attitude or your actual country things are affected so this will be the turning point with Aquarius coming in that's more about a joining together now for you this is a turning point for you to step into something unique something different from what you've had different than what you've been experiencing now here's the ticket think back to 2012 to 2015 what was changing for you? What awakenings were you having? What brand new concepts were coming to your mind or to your world or to your attention that maybe you weren't even prepared to take advantage of at that time? You're stepping into them 2020 and 2021 moving forward. So get prepared for that and it's gonna be in this work area for you. I love it. All right, you guys, I think it's gonna be a year. It's going to be a year. We're going to do stuff. We're going to change. And hopefully we're going to get to walk together all year long. I'll be with you every month and every week giving you a breakdown of what's coming and breaking down the bigger energy so you can see how they're in your chart. Plus, I'll be teaching like crazy this year. So if you're willing and ready to learn, let's do this. All right, my friends, have a beautiful 2020 and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.